My girlfriend interning at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania came across these diaries in the basement. I wasn't that excited about them. I actually thought, here's another diary written by a white woman from the 19th century. We have a lot of them. I got down to August of 1863, and Emily's sitting in a church with four people, and she says, I look around and we was the only colored people in the room. Emily asked the experience of the everyday black woman. In 1863, uh, the free black community of Philadelphia was an exciting place. You had black people walking in top coats and top hats and, and women in these wide pannier dresses with long sleeves and high necks walking along the streets with their umbrellas, stopping and talking to one another about leaving the city because it's gotten too hot. There was a caste system more pronounced in the seventh ward and in the fifth ward. You had a distinct marker between those that were elite and mulatto and those that were colored or black and living in low-income, impoverished communities. Emily Frances Davis was born in 1838. She was a freeborn black woman, born outside of Philadelphia. She grew up in Philadelphia. Emily lived in the seventh ward, and moving through free black Philadelphia, she was seen as a mulatto woman. Mulatto was a term that you wanted to be called. It meant that you looked white, and that white-looking skin gave you access. This is where she lived her life. Emily was a member of the Ladies' Union Association, which was a major organizing group in Philadelphia. All primarily mulatto women, all from elite families, all really educated. She attended First African Presbyterian Church, which was one of the richest churches in Philadelphia at that time. She went to private meetings at the home of William Still, a well-known abolitionist. She attended the Institute for Colored Youth. Emily Davis was an empowered woman, that she had agency, she had social identity. The fact that she chose to record her life every single day for three years meant that she saw herself as important. She saw herself as significant. She had a lot of mobility and control over her finances, which was very rare for a 23 to 24 year old black woman at this time. She was a seamstress, which is a valued profession. When she didn't have money, she would work for four white families, and she would raise a certain amount of money and then quit her job as a domestic and go back to making dresses. In 1865, Emily actually bought a sewing machine through the Singer Loan Program. She says, I spent all day learning how to use my sewing machine. I haven't gotten it right yet. I have more work to do. But she got better because she finally got tapped to do a wedding dress, and that was a creme de la creme. Her diaries change after May of 1863. Prior to that, they're very light entries, and then they begin to do recruitment. Emily's brother, Alfred, he joined up with the colored soldiers and did not want to be a soldier. His wife was very sick. Emily's brother, Tommy, joined the U.S. Navy. He was 14 years old at this time. Emily's uncle, Elijah Davis, he was too old, actually, to be recruited, but he changed his age so he can be a part of this anyway. She's watching the men that she loved and she grew up with go off to war. On top of all of this, Abraham Lincoln gets assassinated. She writes, the city is in deep mourning. She went down and stood in line with over 300,000 people to take one last look at the president. She did not say the body of the president. She said the president is coming to town. Unfortunately, for the reader, she ends the diaries on December 31st, 1865. Personally, as a historian, I feel that I can only put a comma there. I can't put a period. The story is not finished. Notes from a Colored Girl, the Civil War Pocket Diaries of Emily Frances Davis, was published in May by the University of South Carolina Press. The book can be purchased on Amazon.com, on Barnes & Noble. It's directly from the University of South Carolina Press, and it's going to be carried by historical societies throughout the country.